Tonight, on the season premiere of SmackDown, The American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes issues an open challenge for the United States Championship. Who will accept the challenge and contest for the red, white, blue, and gold? And speaking of championship opportunities, the number one contendership at the WWE World Tag Team title is up for grabs when Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde of Legato Del Fantasma battle Imperium's Kaiser and Vinci tonight on SmackDown. And what about the no disqualifications matchup between the EST, Bianca Belair, and the ballsy badass Shotzi? Shotzi squeaked away with victory at no mercy. Can she get the same result here tonight on SmackDown? We want to thank you for joining us here tonight on the season premiere of Friday Night SmackDown in the legendary Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 250 pounds, the Viper. And as Randy Orton makes his way down the aisle, I want to take you back to seven nights ago after Drew McIntyre successfully retained his World Heavyweight title in the main event against AJ Styles. Randy Orton repeating history, ambushing Drew McIntyre from behind, and then a familiar sight as Orton used the big gold belt over the cranium of the Scottish Warrior seven nights ago. Those same motions are how Randy Orton threw down the gauntlet contesting Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight title several months ago, which has led Orton to a multiple month path, searching for his one-on-one -on -one contest against McIntyre. He's had a chance in the triple threat back at Money in the Bank, had a chance in the five-man elimination matchup about two weeks ago at No Mercy, but Orton itching for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity against the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre. And after last week's events, if we know Drew McIntyre, I don't think McIntyre is going to deny that challenge. I'm sure he's going to want to get his hands on the Viper once and for all and finally put to rest Orton's chances to become World Heavyweight Champion. But here tonight in Richmond, the Viper Randy Orton set for a one-on-one -on -one affair against the master of the 6-1-9. Rey Mysterio alongside Dominic and Johnny Gargano unsuccessful against Imperium back at No, Mor no Mercy. Ray looking to bounce back here tonight in the season premiere. And his opponent from San Diego, California, weighing in at 175 pounds, Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio back in singles competition tonight, as we mentioned about two weeks ago at No Mercy. It was Ray Mysterio alongside Dominic and Johnny Gargano in that six man tag team matchup against Imperium which Imperium, of course, picking up the victory on that night. We will see Kaiser and Vinci of that trio in action just a little bit later, contesting for the number one contendership to the tag team titles against Legato Del Fantasma. But here we go, kicking things off in this sold-out Richmond Coliseum with a legendary rivalry here on SmackDown, reignited once more, Rey Mysterio, one-on-one -on -one with Randy Orton. After Orton's pursuit of the World Heavyweight Championship last week, laying out Drew McIntyre. It's time to put up or shut up for Randy Orton. Back in action tonight. Get the W and possibly earn yourself a future World Championship match. And the same might be able to be said about Rey Mysterio, who's looking to get back in the winning ways tonight. And I'm sure Rey would love to earn himself an opportunity at some championship gold. Speaking of championship gold, tonight's main event, the United States title, will be on the line. Cody Rhodes hot off the heels of No Mercy two weeks ago, defending successfully his championship against Braun Breaker in Baltimore. The American Nightmare back in action tonight, issuing an open challenge live here in the season premiere of SmackDown. But who is going to answer that challenge and contest Cody Rhodes for the United States Championship? All remains to be seen in tonight's main event. It's going to be a stack night of action here on SmackDown. I want to thank you for joining us live. I want to thank you once again to everybody who joined us live this past Monday night for the season premiere of Raw. That should be another epic night on the road to Clash at the Castle, October the 22nd in Cardiff, Wales. As this opening match progresses, I want to remind you that channel memberships are available right here on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel. Gain a couple of exclusive perks, support a little extra. You can hit that join button down below. I want to give a shout out to Jack Ka and Loney Jones, some of our channel members here on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel. Hit that join button down below, show your extra support.
As we focus in on the action here, Randy Orton has got Rey Mysterio on the chase, and Orton in a very uncharacteristic position off the top and dropping the axe hammer on the master of the 619s. Orton hell-bent on victory tonight, hell-bent on punching his ticket for a future World Championship match. After those actions last week, once again striking Drew McIntyre over the skull with his very own World Heavyweight Championship. Orton better be careful because there's going to be a fire-breathing warrior on his tail in the future, you got to believe. Drew McIntyre, what a World Championship reign it has been for the Scottish Warrior. What a year it has been. 2023 has really been the year of Drew McIntyre, winning the Elimination Chamber back in January, going on to win in the main event of WrestleMania against Seth Rollins to become the World Heavyweight Champion and has successfully defended the gold against everybody who has lined up in front of him ever since. Some of those names include Braun Breaker, John Cena, AJ Styles, Austin Theory, Edge, and even Randy Orton in multi-man matches. Randy Orton looking for that one-on-one -on -one matchup as he tries to defeat Rey Mysterio here tonight, but Mysterio still with life left in him. Both these men, as we mentioned, searching for that big-time victory, coming off losses at no mercy, and could both be looking for championship opportunities in the near future. And Mysterio trying to get back into this matchup before he can think about the future. Nice takedown on Randy Orton right there. These two men know each other well. have had plenty of battles across the years, especially right here on Friday Night SmackDown as Mysterio, inverted dropkick, takes Orton off his feet. Mysterio has defeated Randy Orton before. Orton has defeated Mysterio, but who's going to get the job done tonight here on Richmond? Beautiful maneuver by Ray as he goes into the cover. Not just yet is Randy Orton able to survive. Mysterio's got this match where he wants it, at least for the moment. Orton rolling to the outside, but Mysterio on his tail. Big time cross body to the outside. Rey Mysterio all kinds of fired up as this matchup progresses, and what a maneuver. Sit down, springboard, moonsault. Down goes the Viper on the outskirts of the squared circle. Mysterio is looking sharp, but can he secure the victory? As he heads to the top rope, somewhere where Rey Mysterio has been most comfortable. Randy Orton trying to chase him out of there. Mysterio lands on his feet like a cat. And there's a the DDT. Mysterio rushes into the cover after a flurry of offense. Not just yet as Randy Orton gets the shoulder up. Rey Mysterio draped in blue tonight for the season premiere of SmackDown. And he's putting on a show against Randy Orton. Randy Orton looking to stop Mysterio dead in his tracks. Going somewhere where only the Apex Predator is most comfortable. Dropping that signature DDT. And suddenly, the mood changes inside the Richmond Coliseum as Randy Orton, with a weakened opponent, looking to put the final nail in the coffin of this matchup. A running punt kick. Mysterio has got to be out like a light as Randy Orton pulls him away from the ropes. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Randy Orton picks up the victory. Well, Rey Mysterio had his foot on the gas pedal for a few moments there. Randy Orton stopped that in a hurry. The DDT followed by that punt right to the skull. And Randy Orton sending a loud and clear message to Drew McIntyre. Here is your winner, the Viper. Randy Orton needed a victory tonight. After he threw down the gauntlet to Drew McIntyre last week, it was put up or shut up time. But has Randy Orton done enough to qualify to take on Drew McIntyre next for the World Championship? That'll be up to the Scottish Warrior himself. But as for tonight here on the season premiere of SmackDown, the Viper, Randy Orton, looking more dangerous than ever. Well, the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament has taken your Saturday afternoons by storm, and it continues tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, with the semifinals of the CWC. Coming your way tomorrow in Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York, former NXT Heritage Cup winner in Nathan Frazier, who has taken the CWC by storm, goes one-on-one -on -one with the whole shebang, Johnny Gargano.
and it's an interpromotional battle in the midst of the semi-finals as SmackDown's human highlight reel Ricochet battles Monday Night Raw's Invincible Ilya Dragunov. It's the semi-finals of the CWC. Who's going on to the finale next week? We find out tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern Time Live for the Cruiserweight Classic. And speaking of the Cruiserweight division, we are back inside the Richmond Coliseum and Chad Gable, who is hot off the heels of an awesome performance against Santos Escobar two weeks ago at No Mercy. We're gonna get back in the win column tonight and possibly earn himself another opportunity at Escobar's Cruiserweight Championship. If you missed out on No Mercy, go check out the replay now. It was two weeks ago in Baltimore. Chad Gable one-on-one -on -one with the Emperor of Lucha Libre, Santos Escobar, and what a matchup it was. Gable pushing Escobar to his limits just two weeks ago at No Mercy, but in the end, the Emperor of Lucha Libre, the leader of Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar squeaking away with victory, ultimately nothing to be ashamed of in defeat for Chad Gable. But back in action tonight is Alpha Academy's master one-on-one -on -one with the submission specialist, the gritty Drew Gulak. As these two men go one-on-one, -on -one, you gotta believe Chad Gable almost more hungry for victory possibly than ever tonight. Just hot off the heels of that loss to Santos Escobar at no mercy. Gable could see this matchup as a chance to put himself back in the front of the line to challenge Escobar for the belt. As Gulak off the big boot, Gable survives, and especially now more than ever, tomorrow afternoon, as you just saw, the semifinals of the Cruiserweight Classic. Next Saturday, the finale of the Cruiserweight Classic. Not only is the winner of this tournament gonna go down in history as the second ever winner of the Cruiserweight Classic, but they will earn a future Cruiserweight Championship matchup in the near future, whatever that may be. So Chad Gable, knowing that a new number one contender is approaching for the Cruiserweight title, may feel a little sense of urgency that if he's gonna get another shot at Escobar, it's now or never. And Gable's gonna get a victory tonight and remind the SmackDown universe and remind Santos Escobar that he is more than capable of being a worthy challenger. What a great way to kick things off on SmackDown moments ago. The cold and sadistic, sadistic excuse me, Randy Orton picking up the victory against Rey Mysterio. So we're going to have more info on Orton and Drew McIntyre's situation as it continues to progress. And of course, still tonight on SmackDown, speaking of Legado del Fantasma, we will see Cruz del Toro and Joaquin Wilde going 2v2 against Imperium's Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser. The winners of that matchup gonna qualify to take on Raw's brawling brutes, Butch and Rich Holland for the WWE World Tag Team titles. Whole lot at stake here tonight in the season premiere of SmackDown and what a fisherman buster by Gable. And into the bridge, immediately goes for the pinfall there. Gulak gets the shoulder up. Drew Gulak hot off for performance. In the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic, he came up short to the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, who fell to Ricochet last weekend. But Drew Gulak reminding the world on that night just what he is capable of inside that ring. Former Cruiserweight champion himself. And although not getting the victory right there off that big exploder, certainly could be one step closer to getting the one, two, three here tonight in the Coliseum. Gulak whipping Gable in as these two great wrestlers pound for pound inside the squared circle continue to battle it out here on SmackDown. Off the middle, buckle rare occurrence by Gulak. You don't normally see him take things to the air, but when he does, he's certainly effective with it. You gotta give Gulak that. Wait a minute, Gable so quick to send Gulak into the corner. Great counter right there. Oh, wait a minute. Master Gable going for the dime piece. Chaos Theory on Drew Gulak into the bridge. Beautiful maneuver leads to an absolute beautiful victory. Well, Chad Gable found himself with his back against the wall there for a moment. This exploder variation by Gulak really changing the tides of momentum. But Gable's sense of urgency snapped into that man and the Chaos Theory was enough to get the one, two, three and a victory for Master Gable. Here is your winner. The cruiserweight division has been hot and heavy, and Santos Escobar, certainly with plenty of challengers lined up, has Chad Gable earned himself another chance. The next time we come your way with a live premiere event, a special joint production of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown, we are going international. Cardiff, Wales, Principality Stadium, 
It is WWE Clash at the Castle. And it is coming your way Sunday night, October the 22nd, live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss this international extravaganza as Raw and SmackDown present Clash at the Castle. We're back live inside the Richmond Coliseum for the season premiere of SmackDown. No rules, no restrictions, and no disqualifications between this ballsy badass and the EST of the WWE. Well, tonight is the chance for Shotzi to finally prove one of a few things, that she is better in her mind than Bianca Belair and to finally cut the ties with the EST herself. We saw Shotzi and Bianca battle it out in a very physical altercation. Great matchup. Go watch the replay if you didn't see it. Just two weeks ago at No Mercy and Bianca Belair absolutely bringing the fight to Shotzi, putting her through the announce table at one point in that match. But just moments later, Shotzi was able to turn the tides, dropping Bianca with a badass DDT inside of the squared circle and ultimately get the win over Bianca herself. Bianca Belair not looking to see that be the final nail in the coffin of these issues, challenging Shotzi to this no disqualifications match tonight. Shotzi obliged, and tonight, Shotzi and Bianca write another chapter in their storied history with each other. But who is gonna get the last laugh? Lights are on bright. Big stage, big fight field, season premiere of SmackDown, and absolutely nothing holding these two women back from absolutely tearing each other apart inside the squared circle. The star that screams the EST, Bianca Belair. Looking to get the last laugh here tonight against the woman who turned her back on her just a few months ago here on SmackDown. That being the woman in green, Shotzi. Bianca Belair upset at that turn of events just a several months ago here on SmackDown. Thought Shotzi absolutely disrespected her. Thought she stabbed her in the back. Thought things could have went differently. But in the end, Bianca Belair giving Shotzi what she wanted. And that was a fight at no mercy. And ultimately, Shotzi was the better woman that night in Baltimore. But will the result be the same here tonight? Once again, no countouts, no disqualifications. This thing's only going to come to a conclusion by a pinfall or via submission. Richmond, Virginia seems to be behind Bianca Belair as the bell has sounded and this no disqualifications bout is underway. Bianca trying to charge hot out of the gate right there, and Shotzi sidestepped. They're immediately pulling her in with the knee. These two women are going to pick up right where they left off at No Mercy. I had a feeling, and we're already seeing it. Ain't going to be no feeling out processes tonight. These two women are looking to end each other once and for all, cut their ties, and move on with their careers. And Shotzi looking to take advantage of the stipulation, already going underneath the ring, pulling out a kendo stick which Bianca avoids. Richmond, Virginia wants to see the tables. Gotta wonder if we're gonna see the wood at any point in this match. Meanwhile, Bianca Belair with the delayed vertical, showcasing her size and strength over Shotzi. And Bianca's got that kendo stick and Shotzi able to avoid it. And remember, about a month ago here on SmackDown, Shotzi used the kendo stick, attacking Bianca Belair from behind inside the middle of that squared circle. It's one of the situations that really upped the ante of this personal rivalry between Bianca and Shotzi that has escalated us to this matchup here tonight on the season premiere of SmackDown. Kendo stick in hand, and Bianca Belair dishes the first blow with the plunder. Oh, and Shotzi with a counter and a hard swing to the rib cage. Things are going to get hardcore in this matchup tonight in Virginia. Bianca Belair, oh, Shotzi running through the strength of Bianca right there and a big time in Siguri. 
It's personal issues like this and certainly matches like this where you see the competitors really push through the pain, let the adrenaline flow through them, and just try to persevere over the other. They'll deal with the issues, the, the internal battles, if you will, the internal wounds tomorrow morning. They just want to get through their opponents tonight and get the last laugh. This has already been back and forth since the opening bell. That kendo stick was just the first blow that I'm sure we're going to see in what is going to continue to be just a vicious matchup. The shots he gets taken to the outside with absolutely no remorse behind it. And the ballsy badass, a little bit dazed, a little bit confused, and Bianca Belair takes things to the air. Not going to help Shotzi's cause. The agility out of Bianca, possibly unmatched in the SmackDown Women's Division as she goes underneath the canvas now. Bianca pulling out a hockey stick. We ain't in hockey country tonight, but Shotzi, however, avoiding the usage of that plunder by Bianca Belair. No count outs, of, of course, in this matchup. These two women free to brawl on the outskirts of the squared circle all they please. Richmond Coliseum might be brought down to absolute shreds the time these two women get through each other. Big time matchup here tonight on SmackDown. Remember, still to come tonight, the United States Championship on the line in your main event. Cody Rhodes issuing that open challenge. Who is going to accept the red, white, blue, and gold? Set to be defended later tonight here in the Richmond Coliseum. Shotzi just continuing this fight on Bianca Belair at ringside, now sending her back inside the ring. This thing is already broken down into a brawl as we expected nothing less. Shotzi looking to go two for two against Bianca here tonight. Sending the EST to the corner. See Shotzi a little bit slowing down the pace. The last moment or so, scales the ropes and delivers a big time maneuver. And she almost had her there off the slice bread maneuver, but Bianca Belair gets the shoulder up and the match continues. Bianca in pain on the outside though as Shotzi bringing that kendo stick with her. Bianca avoids disaster, at least for a moment. Bianca just trying to create some distance right now between herself and Shotzi. Oh, wait a minute here. Bianca pulling out the table from underneath the ring, and Shotzi wanted absolutely none of it. We knew things were going to break down. We knew things were going to get extreme in this no disqualifications match. Shotzi trying to avoid that table. Bianca Blair with other plans, creating a little bit of distance, and now has got her eyes on the wood and sending it inside the squared circle. Bianca Blair is looking to not only get the last laugh, not only get the victory, but really prove a point against Shotzi tonight, but Shotzi catching Bianca off guard with the same DDT that defeated her two weeks ago at No Mercy. But Bianca's able to avoid it tonight. An enthusiastic kick out. Bianca Belair not going to lie down for Shotzi time after time. Bianca Belair fired up tonight. Looked like she was going for that hair whip, and Shotzi avoided it. And a big time counter by Bianca. And Shotzi finds herself in the tree of woe. Bianca's survival instincts right there, saving her from going two losses consecutively to the ballsy badass. And now Shotzi in a predicament. The strength of Bianca Belair. Strength and size, obviously, in Bianca's corner tonight as she muscles up Shotzi. And face first on the canvas goes the ballsy badass. And you notice Bianca's not going for the cover just yet. This is about more than just the victory for Bianca. It's about that sense of retribution of her former friend, her former tag team partner, a woman she held gold with earlier this year in Shotzi. Bianca setting up that table and looking to use it to her... Oh, wait a minute, Shotzi. She's got other plans there, the elbow to the rib cage, and Shotzi big time Saito! And the table burst into a thousand pieces. And now Shotzi gets sent to the outside. The Richmond Coliseum is coming unglued as Bianca and Shotzi continue this war path against one another. Shotzi with that big time Saito, the table exploded. To be fair, I don't know how much of Bianca really caught the table, but it just been the lower half, the feet, the legs. But nonetheless, the fight continues and 
There's almost too much action to keep up with right now as Shotzi trying to swing that kendo stick. Meanwhile, Bianca has cleared off the announce table here at ringside. Well, we saw this at no mercy. Bianca Belair used this table to her advantage. Looking to go two for two here tonight. And Richmond power bomb through the table. Richmond, Virginia is getting a treat tonight here at the season premiere of SmackDown. Bianca sending Shotzi through the table here at ringside and out goes behind, looking for the KOD with the rake to the eyes by the ballsy badass. The fight continues between these two bitter rivals. Shotzi and Bianca have had a lot of battles over the last two years. They may be up in the ante and having their best one here tonight. Shotzi is swinging that kendo stick, not to Bianca Belair's gain. And there's a reversal and a mean shot with the stick to the rib cage. And another, making a trace. And into a million pieces goes the kendo stick. Tables, kendo sticks and possibly the hearts and souls of these two women being broken in the midst of this matchup. Shotzi may have thrown her last blow, her last reversal off that rake to the eyes. Bianca may just be too motivated. And there's the hair whip. Just a disrespectful move to the woman she feels disrespected her when she stabbed her in the back all those months ago. And now Bianca, with Shotzi hoisted in the air. K-O-D! And Bianca Belair to the cover, looking to write the final chapter of this story, but Shotzi gets the shoulder up, and we are not done yet. Bianca Belair, almost in disbelief momentarily, as she heads to the top rope, a place where she has gained victory over Shotzi in years past. Shotzi dazed, but yet on her feet as Bianca comes and drops the hammer. And now Belair, back to the top. And throwing caution into the win. Rib cage to rib cage. Into the cover. One more time. That'll do it. Bianca Belair putting months of frustration behind her tonight. Shotzi may have got the victory. She may have won the battle at no mercy. But tonight, here on the season premiere of SmackDown, Bianca Belair won the war. The KOD, the dive from the top. And Bianca Belair ends this story on her high. Here is your winner, Bianca Belair. Well, we expected a physical fight between the ballsy badass Shotzi and the EST Bianca Belair. And that is exactly what we got here in the Richmond Coliseum tonight. Bianca gets the last laugh on a very physical no disqualification match here on the season premiere of SmackDown. The next time we come your way with a live premiere event, a special joint production of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. We are going international. Cardiff, Wales, Principality Stadium. It is WWE Clash at the Castle. And it is coming your way Sunday night, October the 22nd, live at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Don't miss this international extravaganza as Raw and SmackDown present Clash at the Castle. It is the live premiere event, Clash at the Castle, Principality Stadium, Cardiff, Wales, coming to you live Sunday night, October the 22nd. What an event it is going to be, and already signed for Cardiff, Wales. The Intercontinental Championship on the line, as we found out on the season premiere of Raw, the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, the new number one contender for LA Knight's Intercontinental Gold. And what a collision course. The Beast and the Almighty are going to be on with a number one contendership for the WWE title is at stake. Bobby Lashley, one-on-one -on -one with Brock Lesnar. High stakes, high reward for the Beast and the Almighty. 
And ladies and gentlemen, it has been made official. October the 22nd in Cardiff, Wales. The World Heavyweight Championship is going to be on the line as the Apex Predator Randy Orton challenges the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre. The stage is set for Cardiff, Wales. Clash at the Castle already shaping up to be one hell of an event coming your way next month. Again, Sunday night, October the 22nd at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. But it is time to decide who will challenge for the WWE World Tag Team titles in Cardiff, Wales at Clash at the Castle. The Cruiserweight Champion Santos Escobar hot off the heels of a successful defense at No Mercy. But tonight he stands alongside Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde as they look to get the job done against these two men alongside the Ring General Gunther who are coming off a big time win at No Mercy against the Mysterios and Gargano. Giovanni Vinci, Ludwig Kaiser, could they be your next number one contenders? Who fights the brawling boots on the 22nd of October? We find out right now. And their opponents, accompanied by Gunther at a combined weight of 440 pounds. Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci Imperium! This is a big opportunity for Imperium tonight to step one foot closer to bringing some championship gold back to their locker room. Gunther has been on a war path since losing his United States Championship back in August at SummerSlam to Cody Rhodes. We have seen Gunther contest against Johnny Gargano one-on-one, -on -one, the six-man tag, as we mentioned back in No Mercy. There has been something different about the ring general. More fired up, more focused, and that is relayed onto Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. Remember two weeks ago, Kaiser one-on-one -on -one with Rey Mysterio here on SmackDown. Kaiser picking up that huge singles victory over Rey. Of course, that led, that momentum led into No Mercy 24 hours later, where again, these three men successful against Dominic, Ray and Johnny Gargano. And now tonight, Gunther and Santos Escobar will stand on the outside and let their compadres go to work inside the ring. The Brawling Brutes became the new World Tag Team Champions, defeating the Judgment Day at the Raw exclusive Unforgiven event two weeks ago. Have already retained the gold against Pretty Deadly a few weeks ago on Raw. And now we decide who they will fight on the 22nd of October in Cardiff, Wales. My goodness. Will it be Legado del Fantasma or will it be Imperium? As the question we look to find an answer to here tonight on what has been an awesome edition of Friday Night Smackdown, the season premiere here in the Richmond Coliseum. Cruz del Toro, Joaquin Wild, hot out of the gate. Legado del Fantasma looking for their opportunity tonight. They go one-on-one, -on -one, or I should say 2v2 against Butch and Ridge Holland at Clash at the Castle. They can bring home gold, and we could be looking at a situation where Legado del Fantasma is holding all kinds of gold. And the tag team titles, and of course, the Cruiserweight Championship currently held by the man at ringside, Santos Escobar. You know, I'm sure Santos Escobar's kept a close eye on the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. I'm sure he saw what Chad Gable did earlier tonight. A lot of competition heating up in the Cruiserweight division right now. And again, ladies and gentlemen, the semifinals of the CWC tournament coming your way tomorrow afternoon, live, 3 p.m. Eastern time from the Manhattan, New York, Hammerstein Ballroom, where we will see Nathan Fraser one-on-one -on -one with Johnny Gargano, and of course, Ilya Dragunov set to battle Ricochet. Winners of those two matches will meet in the finals of the Cruiserweight Classic next Saturday afternoon. Multiple matches to be added on the CWC finale. Cannot wait to get to what is going to be an extraordinary event next week. Meanwhile, Imperium's Giovanni Vinci, the legal competitor, taking Joaquin Wilde to the outside. And now, wait a minute. Turning his sights to Cruz del Toro and Giovanni Vinci trying to divide and conquer in this number one contender's match. But Joaquin Wilde picking his spot. Very smart by Joaquin Wilde there. Unfortunately, Cruz del Toro had to feel the brunt of that maneuver by Giovanni Vinci, but Wilde picked his opportunity to take things to the air. Now sending Giovanni Vinci back to the outside. Now Vinci, an opportune state. And look out on El Fantasma territory, and Wilde once again off the springboard. Down goes Vinci at ringside. 
Look out on El Fantasma. Sometimes you may forget how great Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro are from bell to bell, two of the best athletes in the cruiserweight division. But their brotherhood with Santos Escobar sometimes can cast a shadow on the team that is Legado del Fantasma. Tonight looking to step out of that shadow a little bit, looking to earn their own opportunity against Imperium's Kaiser and Vinci. The tag made to Cruz del Toro, like we feel in that drop on the apron from a moment ago, but nonetheless is going to persevere in this match. I want to thank you for joining us yet again here from the Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia, where it has been an awesome addition here on the season premiere of Friday Night SmackDown. Already tonight, Randy Orton picking up the victory over Rey Mysterio. And what about the news we found out moments ago? Randy Orton will go one-on-one -on -one with the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre, for the World Heavyweight Championship coming up on October 22nd in Cardiff, Wales at Clash of the Castle. Also signed for that event already from Monday Night Raw, the big strong boy, Tyler Bate. Winning that four-way contest this past Monday night, he will challenge L.A. Knight for the Intercontinental Championship. And of course, the number one contenders matchup to decide a future challenger for the WWE title currently held by Seth Rollins. And we'll see the almighty Bobby Lashley taking on the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar. And of course, the tag team title is going to be on the line. One of these duos set to go 2v2 against Butch and Ridge Holland in that big interpromotional matchup for the world tag team titles. Lashley the Castle shaping up to be an extraordinary event coming up on the 22nd of October as Giovanni Vinci, the tag, and coming in hot right there against Cruz Del Toro. The big time reversal there. Now Del Toro wrapping up Giovanni Vinci. Big time maneuver right back at him. Trailing him up and down to the canvas and could be coming number one contenders, not just yet. Still to come tonight on SmackDown, the United States Championship will be defended. So we've been talking about all night long, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, who won the title back at SummerSlam against one of the men at ringside, that being Gunther. And of course, successfully retained it already against Ricochet a number of weeks ago here on SmackDown. And of course, Braun Breaker two weeks ago at No Mercy. Cody now issuing the open challenge tonight, looking to continue to be a fighting champion. But who is going to answer the challenge of the American Nightmare and have their crack at the United States Championship? It's going to be a big fight feel in tonight's main event. As this number one contenders match progresses and certainly another big fight feel at hand. Referee certainly got his hands full in this matchup with all these combustible elements as Cruz Del Toro Absolute extraordinary athlete in that ring. Cruz Del Toro reminding the world in this matchup just what him and Joaquin Wilde are capable of. Step up, springboard to the outside, corkscrew. Not enough to keep the Giovanni Vinci down for the three count, but certainly going to do some damage as this matchup progresses. Now Del Toro off the springboard. Nice kick to Vinci, taking him off his feet. Legado del Fantasma is starting to pick up some momentum in this matchup. Could be one step closer to becoming the number one contenders. There's the ring general, Guther, at ringside. Somebody who commands excellence at a Vinci and Kaiser. As Guther has continued to be get refocused and really re-energized over the last month and change ever since losing that United States title and suffering his first loss here on SmackDown. That extra motivation has really relayed on to Kaiser and Vinci as we talked about. And so far, it has been nothing but success for Imperium. Will that continue here tonight? Gotta imagine the Imperium locker room's feeling a little bit cold. No championship in there right now. It's been a little bit as they've been without gold. And Joaquin Wild not interested in bringing any gold back to warm up the Imperium locker room. What a maneuver there off the tag, rolling right up to Vinci with the double knee breaker. Vinci was able to create some distance, but not for long. Tag made, or excuse me, to Kaiser and tag made to Vinci. On Joaquin Wild, but he just got caught off guard. Giovanni Vinci can be a powerhouse for Imperium, and he just showed us why. And off the two, he almost had him there. Imperium half a second away to becoming the number one contenders for the world tag team titles. Close call there, Joaquin Wild fighting the handicap match at the moment as Cruz del Toro nursing 
Some fatigue in the match at ringside. And Imperium's best opportunity to win right might be what, right now, excuse me. Kai made the fresher competitor. Ludwig Kaiser who comes out hot with an Inseguri. Uppercut. Joaquin Wild able to kick out again, but another close goal for Legato del Fantasma. He start getting the ball rolling. Wait a minute, roll up here. Looking for the number one contender. Shit, not just yet. A great matchup all in hand. Here's it on the season premiere of SmackDown. Two of SmackDown's best teams in the division. Legato del Fantasma and Imperium battling out tonight. Very interesting matchup. Imperium has become one of the most intimidating factors of the SmackDown locker room over the last few months. And we have really seen Legato del Fantasma's talent in that ring shine and has really made them some of the fan favorites here on SmackDown. We've heard that crowd reaction change for Legato del Fantasma. More applause, more cheers for the talents, and those are some of the maneuvers why. Respect being shown, a mutual respect between LDF and the WWE Universe. And Joaquin Wilde looking to give the WWE Universe something to cheer about tonight. Off the double boots, but Ludwig Kaiser kicks out again. An appreciation being shown by this sold out capacity crowd here in the Richmond Coliseum for the season premiere of SmackDown. Tag Team Wrestling on Showcase and on Demand. Kaiser in the ring with Cruz Del Toro. And there's a counter by Kaiser. He goes behind, counter by Del Toro. Goes underneath, look at that, stacking up Kaiser. Going for the pinfall here in Imperium territory though. And a quick breakout for Giovanni Vinci. Uther cannot be happy as Legato del Fantasma is really starting to pick up steam in this number one contenders matchup. Kaiser down, but is Kaiser out? And a kick out gives Imperium's chances just another moment to live on. I don't wonder what it's gonna take with such a high opportunity at stake in two teams who have been itching for opportunity here on SmackDown. Neither one looking to give an inch. As Cruz del Toro up on the top rope, taking out, or excuse me, taking out Giovanni Vinci moments ago. Kaiser to his feet, and del Toro big time corkscrew. Cruz del Toro, such a unique move set from bell to bell. Making him one of the most unpredictable athletes in the cruiserweight division, and especially in the tag team division. Oh, but Kaiser got an answer for almost anybody. Off that reverse, into the cover. And he almost had him there. Imperium once more, one second away from challenging the brawling brutes on the 22nd of October. But Cruz del Toro may just want it more. On the shoulders of Vinci, creels him up. Not just yet, as Joaquin Wilde gets the break. And Logato Lil Fantasma is now fighting from underneath. Oh, del Toro pop up in Siguri. LDF still showing some light. Vinci brought into the opposing territory. Not where he wants to be as Richmond Coliseum building some momentum, putting some steam behind Cruz del Toro and Joaquin Wilde in this match. Oh man, big time Saido right there. And Uranagi, I should state, as Cruz del Toro comes off at the springboard. Another close pinfall, but is it gonna do it? No, Giovanni Vinci with almost every ounce of enthusiasm left gets the shoulder off the canvas but you see fatigue on both ends of the ring starting to play a factor and del toro coming off the apron coming off the top not just yet again as giovanni vinci kicks out endurance starts to play a factor these tag team matches with such high stakes known to go the distance especially tonight it's for good reason Neither team looking to see this opportunity slip through their fingers. Tag made to Ludwig Kaiser, where Joaquin Wilde elects to drop Giovanni Vinci with that DDT. Now turns his sights to Ludwig Kaiser. What a net breaker. Imperium's back is up against the wall. And Joaquin Wilde, double boots to the jaw. We got new number one contenders. 
Not just yet as Giovanni Vinci is up and Giovanni Vinci doesn't even allow a one count there. Logano Leo Fantasma trying to outrun the numbers into the cover of Ludwig Kaiser. Without hesitation on the pinfall, enough to recalibrate some energy. And I wonder, sure the brawling brutes have got their eyes on this matchup, looking at both these challenging teams, wondering who is gonna give them the fight of their life inside Principality Stadium next month. Joaquin Wild, roll up. Does he have him here? No, he does not. Hero's gotta regroup and Joaquin Wild not gonna allow it. Logano Del Fantasma's strong suit in this match has been their high risk maneuvers and luckily for them, it has paid them dividends. They call it high risk, high reward. Sometimes you crash and burn and it doesn't work out. But Joaquin Wild and Cruz Del Toro, when it comes to the delivery off the high risk, have hit the jackpot, but they may have run short on a victory. Ties are off the double knees. And now has got a dazed Joaquin Wilde and dragging him into Imperium territory. And Giovanni Vinci and Kaiser looking to pick the bones of this fatigue challenger. Another kick to the gut. The strength by Vinci muscling up the opposer, but Joaquin Wilde gets out of it, taking out the knee. Man, business is picking up in this high stakes tag team matchup. As Vinci into the ropes, big time elbow drop. Gunther at ringside, barking orders to Imperium. But Vinci goes face first off the canvas. And I smell victory, but Ludwig Kaiser says otherwise. Gotta wonder what is it gonna take to put the final nail in the coffin of this tag team bout here tonight. As Wild looking to take care of Vinci. Wild not afraid to throw caution in the wind. All in the means of victory here tonight. And does it again! Ludwig Kaiser may be out for the count. And Joaquin Wilde may have just scored a victory over Giovanni Vinci. Does he finally have it? No! Man, oh man, what a matchup we are getting here tonight. Giovanni Vinci trying to get to his feet. And Joaquin Wilde taking care of business single-handedly right now. Oh, but Giovanni Vinci, don't take your eyes off the ball. Joaquin Wilde getting paid. And now Vinci gonna do the damage on Cruz del Toro. Make Legato del Fantasma feel a taste of their own medicine. Del Toro down, Kaiser down. Wild and Vinci with every strand of energy left in their souls, left inside the squared circle. But who will become the number one contenders for the tag team titles? Double boots to the jaw of Vinci, into the cover. Does he have them here? No! Ludwig Kaiser breaks it up, and you gotta wonder what the hell is it gonna take as Joaquin Wild sunset flip once more at ringside. If that doesn't take Kaiser out, I don't know what will. Vinci eating the ring post for Friday night dinner. Adrenaline is just fueling these two teams right now to the final bell. Joaquin Wild tag made to Del Toro. It's been a little bit since we've gotten some fresh legs. Wait a minute, might have thrown Vinci off. He got him, scores the victory. A sneaky, sneaky pinfall for Cruz del Toro, but it is enough to finally secure the one, the two, and the three, and most importantly, Legato del Fantasma officially crowned the number one contenders. Here are your winners, Joaquin White and Cruz del Toro, Legato del Fantasma. That is a trio motivated by excellence. And will it be a trio motivated by championship gold? As the matchup officially signed for Clash of the Castle, Legato del Fantasma will meet the Brawling Brutes for the WWE World Tag Team Championship.
Well, as the road to Clash of the Castle continues, the World Heavyweight Champion Drew McIntyre set for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the Irish Ace, J.D. McDonough. That's coming your way next week here on Friday Night SmackDown. But it is main event time here in Richmond. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE United States Championship. Ho, ho, ho. Well, look who is accepting the open challenge of the American Nightmare. The self-proclaimed Aussie icon from NXT, and I assume officially a part of Friday Night SmackDown, Grayson Waller. Well, what a debut this can be for this young man from Australia, a man who won the NXT Iron Survivor Challenge back last year, 2022, and has certainly been one of the breakout superstars of the black and gold brand in recent years. Grayson Waller, big time opportunity tonight in his Friday Night SmackDown debut, accepting the open challenge of Cody Rhodes. And just imagine if this young man, who certainly is a little bit egotistical at times, could come into a SmackDown debut and win the United States Championship night one. How shocking that would be. Grayson Waller here on SmackDown. But here comes the opposer, the American Nightmare, the reigning, defending United States Champion, Cody Rhodes. He defeated Gunther at SummerSlam. He has retained the title over Ricochet and Braun Breaker. But the American Nightmare looking to be a fighting champion. Grayson Waller is the opponent. Can Cody Rhodes survive? Or is the title reign about to expire? I'll tell you what, Cody Rhodes is certainly a confident man from bell to bell and wouldn't have issued this United States Open Challenge if he wondered if there was anybody who did stand a chance at defeating him in that ring. Cody Rhodes is a superstar that oozes confidence. And with all due respect to Grayson Waller, I am sure Cody Rhodes is looking right through Grayson Waller and looking at another successful championship defense. It is a big fight feel here in the season premiere of SmackDown. I want to thank you for joining us for what has been an awesome night here in the Richmond Coliseum. Richmond, Virginia has been rocking all night long on the road to clash at the castle next month. But Cody Rhodes set to defend the United States Championship. And the man accepting the challenge is the debuting, Grayson Waller, who's looking to give Cody Rhodes a little Grayson Waller effect, a little Grayson Waller rub, and also take away the United States Championship. Let's send things down to the ring for the official introductions. Introducing the challenger from Sydney, Australia, weighing in at 206 pounds, Grayson Waller. And his opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, he is the WWE United States Champion, the American Nightmare. It is main event time here in Richmond in the season premiere of SmackDown. The red, white, blue, and gold. The United States Heavyweight Championship up for grabs as Cody Rhodes hands over the title for possibly the last time and what has been a successful championship reign thus far. The debuting Aussie icon, Grayson Waller, battles the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes live and in living color in your main event. Should be a great matchup, open challenge being accepted by the debuting Grayson Waller as the bell has sounded. We are underway. Who will leave Richmond as the United States Champion? Grayson Waller looking to come out hot in this matchup. Accepting the challenge upon his debut. Surprising us all here tonight. As Cody Rhodes, however, 
Not looking to give Grayson Waller a successful first run here on the blue brand. Cody Rhodes has been on a roll for months here on Friday Night SmackDown. My goodness. Closing up the arms of Grayson Waller and dropping him right on the dome. The American Nightmare hell bent on victory and once and early. Cody Rhodes, as we mentioned, would have issued an open challenge if he wasn't confident. He gave Ricochet a championship matchup just days after he contested against Guther at SummerSlam last month. Ron Breaker threw out the challenge. Cody was quick to accept. And now the open challenge by Cody tonight. A fighting champion is the American Nightmare. One thing about that fighting mentality is sometimes you can be in a little over your head. Sometimes it can come back to haunt you. It is a 100% fresh and raring to go. Debuting Grayson Waller enough to throw Cody off his game and possibly take away the United States title here tonight. All remains to be seen in due time as we are in the midst of your main event here in the season premiere of Friday Night SmackDown. Grayson Waller going for the boot. Cody Rhodes having none of it there. And a big time hip toss by the American Nightmare. I want to thank you for joining us once more here tonight. Well, it's been an awesome night of action. Be sure to hit the like button down below. Be sure to subscribe on the road to 2,000 subscribers. And if you want to support just a little extra, you can hit the join button down below. Become a channel member. Receive a shout out in a future Universe Mode episode. Cody Rhodes dropping the big time knee on Grayson Waller right there. Just because Grayson Waller's got the surprise factor tonight doesn't mean Cody Rhodes isn't going to be able to think on his feet, come up with a game plan, and execute it to perfection. Grayson Waller can be a bit of a brawler at times, and Cody Rhodes finding that out firsthand, throwing those closed fists to the American Nightmare. And now a couple of knees could say to the chest, but I'm going to elect to say to the heart. And Waller keeping the foot on the gas pedal just as he needs to do against somebody the caliber of the United States champion. We saw the war that Cody Rhodes went through just two weeks ago at No Mercy. With meaner than evil himself, Braun Breaker. What a vicious match that was. Breaker near moments away from leaving Baltimore as the United States champion. Multiple times in that matchup, we thought he had him. In the end, Cody Rhodes, however, able to dig down deep fight from underneath definitely throughout that contest and come out on the other end retaining his United States title will Cody find himself in the same predicament here tonight that's the question we are currently finding an answer to oh and Grayson Waller with another super kick but Cody Rhodes not having none of it there Cody Rhodes knows how to take one on the chin that's for darn sure gotta keep fighting until he hears a bell Waller rolling to the outside, trying to get his wits about him, create some distance, at least for the moment. And Cody Rose not looking too phased at his challenger here this evening. May not want to underestimate Waller as Waller sends him right into the steel steps. The debuting Grayson Waller, the Aussie icon, not looking to have an unsuccessful debut tonight on the blue brand. He's looking to take the fullest advantage of this open challenge and leave as the new United States champion. Another elbow drop, this time on the outside of the ring. It's not going to go well for Cody Rhodes as this matchup progresses. Grayson Waller now has got the matchup in his favor. Of course, can't win the title via count out. Trying to get Cody back inside the ring, but Cody not going to go in by the will of Grayson Waller. Now it's Cody back in control, or at least for a moment there, as Grayson Waller. Really swinging the pendulum of momentum back and forth between champion and challenger in this contest. And that's a right hand heard around the Coliseum into the cover. And only a one count there. Cody Rhodes able to shake it off, pop the shoulder off the canvas, but certainly some damage done to the defending champion. And Waller looking to keep the foot of the gas pedal. Unloading on Cody Rhodes in the corner. Cody rolling to the outside. Trying to rally Richmond, Virginia in the midst of this main event affair. Back inside the ring, Grayson Whaler awaiting him right there. Wailing away on him, and Cody Rhodes off the reversal. Down goes his top challenger here this evening. Now again, Cody Rhodes. 
Looks for possibly a DDT, maybe a suplex, but Grayson Waller. Oh, look at that maneuver. Blockbuster on Prettier. New champion on the horizon. Not just yet as Cody Rhodes kicked out, but Grayson Waller almost surprising the champion right there. And that was a huge reversal by the Aussie icon. Blockbuster on Prettier. Absolutely up in the ante in the United States Championship matchup here tonight. Grayson Waller now. The pendulum of momentum continues to swing back and forth in this contest. Neither man really able to get an edge for continued amount of time. And Cody now. Scoop and a slam. Waller goes down into the cover. Is that all she wrote for the challenger? Not just yet. A great matchup between the challenger and the champion. Debuting off the icon and the champion, the American Nightmare. But who wants it more tonight here on SmackDown? Cody oh, having to use the ropes to get to his feet that time. That should tell you the whole story about how fatigue is starting to set in for the champion. And I really do think that blockbuster by Grayson Waller a few moments ago changed the tide to this match. Waller looking to steal the victory. Almost had him there. Imagine if Cody Rose championship reign came to an end off a quick maneuver like that. Nice counter by Waller. Counter by Cody. And now wait a minute, Cody Rhodes going for the kill with the crossroads into the cover. And that's gonna be another successful championship defense for the American Nightmare. Well, the debuting Grayson Waller changed the tides of the matchup with that there very blockbuster, but unfortunately not able to capitalize because Cody finds a will and certainly finds a way. Here is your winner, and still, WWE United States Champion. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. John Cena's in the ring. We, wait a minute. Cena's on Monday Night Raw. We haven't seen Cena since SummerSlam. But Cena's here in Richmond, and he's staring down the American Nightmare. Oh, well, this is an interesting development. Cena, Cody, face to face. And Cody holding the stakes high. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight at the season premiere of SmackDown. Good night from Richmond. Pace on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm a rock.